we're gonna spam him again not playing the golem right we're avoiding playing the golem we don't need to we're gonna do this instead play our support cards and still try and overwhelm them phoenix is gonna respawn and that's what i'm talking about you can win without playing your golem when you when you run this deck and that is important to recognize you can just win with your support cards you what's up gamers it's turkey here and today we're going to be testing out the new evo goblin <coughs> diddy cage huh? in this 4.0 golem deck as always i was doing my deck research and i found this golem deck on royal api and in my opinion this is the best golem deck this season you have the evo goblin cage the evo berry arrows and void arguably the best spells in the entire game and all you really need to do is get up like like two or three elixir and you can basically just take their entire tower that is a massive oversimplification of this deck but it is really strong and if you've never played golem i'm really excited to show you how to use this deck come along for the ride and let's get lots of three crowns with this zero skill golem deck all right into our first match here and i just want to make sure everyone knows that when i say golem takes no skill i i i i don't want to say it's a joke but I don't actually believe it. Golem does actually take a lot of skill, contrary to popular belief. Golem is a difficult deck to use in a lot of circumstances. I think there are many, many decks that take a lot less skill than Golem. So, I, you know, I take it back. Well, not I take it back, but just know that I'm like half kidding when I say that. Okay, we're up here against Hog EQ. So this is interesting because they usually have Firecracker and Tesla. So you usually save arrows for the Firecracker and then Void for the Tesla. Um, but the problem is they have a really fast cycle, so they can usually get, like, a second one down, which is kind of annoying. Okay, he does that. I'm gonna do this. Okay. All good, all good. All good. This is interesting for us, too, because we're running a golem deck that doesn't have tornado. So usually when you defend hog, it's like, oh, you can maybe nato it to the king tower a lot of the times. But with this deck variant, we don't have that luxury. So the main thing that kind of, I think, pushes people away from golem is how, like, horrible defending in single elixir is. And it really is bad. Like, defending in single elixir a lot of the times is like an absolute nightmare. Um, just know that golem as a deck thrives in double and triple elixir the reason for that is because your deck is so expensive at 4.0 elixir your opponent can kind of just run circles around you in single elixir so it, most of the time with this deck as long as you survive single elixir um you're kind of waiting for your moment to strike when double elixir is the time so that is the biggest barrier to entry with this deck so just keep that in mind it'll take a lot of practice i mean myself included just trying to figure out how to survive single elixir with this deck because it, it is fairly difficult in a, a lot of instances you can see here we don't have anything great for the hog rider gonna arrows on the firecracker and you can see he's already taken majority of our tower so basically double elixir is here now is the time to go in for a golem he doesn't have a hog in hand so we're gonna go in for a golem and hope for the best we also have both of our evolutions in cycle so that should help out immensely okay we're gonna go like this with our evil bomber diddy cage beautiful that splash onto everything you can see here that he doesn't get any damage with that hog even though we thought definitely that he was going to we have arrows and void for the firecracker in the building, so let's go bang. Good void block by him, I mean, assuming that that was on purpose. That was well played. We need to get rid of that as quickly as possible. And okay, not bad. Not great, but, you know, not bad. Okay, we're going to keep the pressure up. Now is a good time to go in for the lumberjack. Lumberjack is one of the best quick pressure uh, options at the bridge. We're going to do that. He's going to go in and try and tower trade. Um, we're going to make sure we don't. And that's what I'm talking about with this deck. Like, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, perfect. He didn't get a hog hit there. If you looked at that nut, that match in a nutshell, we were losing the entire game. We were losing the entire game. We were getting destroyed, and then we literally took his tower with one golem push. That is what this deck is in a nutshell. So we're going to hold that W and catch you in the next match. All right, enter our next match here against this person. And so, yeah, that is kind of like, if you're running golem, you need to kind of have, like... You need to have a strong stomach because I think the reason a lot of people get into trouble with Golem is like they don't want to take damage and they're running it and they're like, oh, like I'm taking so much damage. You need to be prepared to take damage if you're running Golem or Lava Hound or anything like that. Like these decks, you're going to eat a few hundred thousand damage and you need to trust in your abilities and trust in the deck that you're going to be able to do tower trades and things like that. This person looks like he's running an interesting deck. Lumberjack actually does a crap ton of damage on the tower. I'm like flabbergasted that he just ignored that. Okay, looks like he's playing a weird deck. I mean, I'm not 100%, like, I really don't know what he's running, to be honest. It looks really weird. Okay, it's going to be RG, apparently. 
I'll, I'll do this. I mean, I don't always cycle the cage. I mean, I'm, I'm really glad I played the cage now that he raged it. I can already tell he's playing rather aggressively. I mean, people definitely have play styles with decks, so... Um, I don't mind an aggressive player, especially when I'm running Golem. Like, you kind of want someone who's aggressive and, like, plays into you. You can kind of, like, capitalize off of that. Oh, man, the BM is already coming out. <laughs> I don't know if he doesn't like the matchup, but, I mean, like, this game's already over. If you're playing Golem, you never expect to win in single elixir you're always expecting to win in double elixir so if you ever find yourself in that situation where you're winning in single elixir like your opponent did something really bad like they they just uh, they messed up they don't messed up if if you know they're in that situation okay i'm debating how i want to defend this i think i'm gonna try and pull it to my king tower damn okay let's do this Diddy Cage should take care of the... Well, I thought it was going to take care of the Mega Knight, but it didn't take care of the Mega Knight. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, that was really poorly defended by me, let's be honest. I just want to get this off the map. I think what I should have done is just committed to the Golem and not tried to defend uh, in hindsight. But that's okay. He's still, he's still going to have to spend, like, at least six Elixir to take this tower. So I think what I'm going to do is, you know, like I said... Have that, that strong stomach uh, and set up for the golem. He still has to spend to take my tower, whether it's a spell or... Yeah, okay, whether it's a spell or something like that. We're up a little bit of elixir, so let's golem up. Nice. He Mega Knight's into our golem. That's actually perfect. Um, if he goes for the RG, I probably will just let it go, to be completely honest. Okay, not if he does it in this lane, though. So let's do this. We'll take the arrows. Nice. Great arrows value. Beautiful. Use his arrows. I need to be careful because he has a scar me though. I need a yes. I knew he had a scar me. No, 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 no. I want him to have to play arrows here. Hopefully, perfect. Because now he has to arrows to take this tower, and he won't be able to defend. Yep, he had arrows on defense. So good game to that guy. A little bit of bad defense in the middle of the match, but again, it ended up not being close. So GG's to this guy. Catch you in the next match. And into our next match against Le La Lou Le Louch. Le 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 Le. I don't know, I can't read French. Alright, Princess comes down. So Logbait can do work against um Golem a lot of times, so we'll see. I'm just gonna ignore that. I'm gonna go like this, find out if he has a rocket. He might rocket it if he's running bait, or he might just let it go. We'll see. Let's do this. He goes barrel, I'm not sure. I'm curious what he plays on this, actually. I want to force out his building, if possible. Nice, we do force out the building. But the thing is, he can always cycle back to it, like, pretty fast, so it's not, like, that big of a whatever. But it's good to know what building he has, like, if he has Inferno or Tesla, so... I'm grateful to know that he has the, uh, Tezzy. Okay. And again, single elixir is just your, like, you're trying to survive <laughs> in single. Try not to lose the match in single is the name of the game when you're on the stack. Absolutely. Okay, Barry's going to do a great job, so I shouldn't have to respond to the knight, I don't think. Okay, I'm going to go... Well, he doesn't have Princess in Cycle. Cage is one of the best things you can do when they have Princess in Cycle. If he goes gang opposite lane, I'll go um, Goblin Cage. The one thing I have going for me is that, like, I feel like I know how bait players play this because I main log bait, so that part is kind of a benefit at the very least. Okay, against my better judgment, I'm going to golem up here. And just go for the berry. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful call by me. I mean, that was as much pressure as he could do. I have arrows if he pressures with a gang. Like, we look great here. Like, genuinely, we look, we look really good here. I think he has evil Tesla in cycle, so that is not great. But we do have the void. Nice, and he used his gang. Oh, man, this is great, in a sense, for us. I think, I don't know. I'm not a super big golem player, but... <laughs> I think it's decent. Yeah, that's gonna be great damage, right? Like, am I tripping, or is that good damage? Phoenix is popping off. Very nice, very nice. And Phoenix, we trust. Phoenix doing her thing. Nice job, Feeny. Cage, in case he goes. Oh, that's gonna respawn. Oh, yes. Very full counters the, uh, the barrel. Nice. One golem is all it takes, and guess what? We can golem up again because our cycle is great. He doesn't have a barrel in hand. All that great stuff. Oh. 
Gonna do this. Eat it and sacrifice a little bit of damage, right? It's okay. Yeah. Good void block. If it was intentional. I mean, I'm sure it was intentional. Yeah. Great void block. Okay. As soon as we have enough. Okay. And I think he's cooked. <laughs> Good game. Good game against Logbait. I mean, the matchup's hard. I think we played it really well. When you play against Logbait in general, you just want to defend the barrel and the princess as cheaply as possible. Get a lead. Go for golem when it's safe. And just destroy them. GG to that bait player. We'll hold that W. Catch you in the next match. All right, in our next match here against Gonti. Okay, he's running Dagger Duchess. That's actually pretty good. I think that's probably the best... Um, what's it called? Oh, I didn't mean to play it in that lane. No, I say like one of the best decks for you to go against would be Dagger Duchess. Um, and he just cycled his P.E.K.K.A. first play. That's like kind of amazing. But like I said, I didn't mean to do this. This was all kind of a mistake. Come on, dude. Like, no, really? Like, not like this, right? Wait, he has P.E.K.K.A. and Mini P.E.K.K.A.? Are you kidding me? All right, well. I just realized he has P.E.K.K.A. and Mini P.E.K.K.A. and I'm running Golem. <laughs> uh, okay, so that sucks. I mean, Mini Tanks are really good. Like, obviously, they just destroy the Golem. So, I'm trying to think of the best way to play around it. Like, Void takes care of Mini P.E.K.K.A., but I don't really have much for the P.E.K.K.A. <laughs> interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. And by interesting, I mean, like, that kind of sucks. Okay. Get the Phoenix down. Could Golem kite and single elixir doesn't feel like that's like a great idea to be honest. I really just wanted the Phoenix Egg to respawn, to be honest. That block was pretty smart. He blocked the void, that was why he did that. And that's what I'm talking about. Like my push just gets shredded. Shredded. I'm gonna go Lumberjack here for the... that. Yeah. Well, it was an idea. So he has Wizard, Bandit, P.E.K.K.A., Mini P.E.K.K.A. Interesting. Alright, we'll see how things shape out in Double Elixir. I'm not giving up yet. I'm sure the world's best Golem player could pull off a dub here. Is that me? No, but that's okay. Okay, we're gonna see if we can get like a cheap defense here. I mean, probably not. Okay, Goblin Cage, maybe. Pull that bad boy in. I mean, my man has to start defending this. With the mini P.E.K.K.A., I'm sure. Dude! Mini P.E.K.K.A. just shreds that entire push. I mean, that is still good damage, though. Like, I'm happy with that damage, but it's like, oh. Mini P.E.K.K.A. Mini P.E.K.K.A. I think Lumberjack in the middle should help defend both sides. Okay, good job, Lumby. Page comes down as well. I'm gonna void on the wizard. It's always, like, a good idea, I feel like, because otherwise the wizard gets too much volume. Okay. I have no idea what deck my dude is running, but somehow we're alive, so you won't hear me complain. Night Witch comes down. I would have rather had the Night Witch to support the Golem, but that's okay. Alright, against my better judgment, I'm gonna Golem up. Okay, yeah, P.E.K.K.A. comes down, obviously. Like, why would you not P.E.K.K.A. in that situation? Okay. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine. It's fine, it's not fine, though, but it's fine. We have our Barry here for support. And our Lumberjack to DPS everything down. He had the same idea. Diddy Cage on defense. Diddy Cage doing work, though. Nice, nice, nice. Chat, I remind you, he had P.E.K.K.A. and Mini P.E.K.K.A. Nice, okay, that's almost, I'm almost considering just going for, like, Spell Cycle at this point, I feel like, because it's just tough. No, 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 no! That Night Witch tried to sell. Tried to sell everything we've worked so hard for. Okay, beautiful. Okay, I have to go for the Cage here. 
beautiful, beautiful. He's getting Noivus. He's getting Noivus. Oh, yes, yes. Page is going to go crazy here. Hopefully, it goes Nuclea. I don't even know what's happening, but that evil wizard is cooking me. Dude. Okay, okay. Good, good, good. Void on the wizard. This is the most unorthodox golem match I have ever played. No, bad arrows. Horrible arrows. Phoenix popping off. Wow. That was the weirdest golem match I've ever played. But you know what? He was running P.E.K.K.A. and Mini P.E.K.K.A. And we somehow won. Can you believe that? GG's to that guy. You'll probably never play that matchup, but that's okay. We'll hold that W and get you in the next match. I did our next match here against this player. Gonna see what we can do. Like I said, single elixir, always the most challenging time when you're running Golem. In terms of starting place, you can cycle your cage. Okay, you kind of gave us a reason to cycle the cage here. That's perfect. You're kind of hoping people play into you, though, when you run Golem. You're kind of just waiting patiently, which is why when you're in, like, mid ladder, there are always players that are, like, they'll, they'll play into you a lot of the times. So you can kind of get lucky. Looks like he's running Pekka here. Good void by him. Although, yeah. No, that was a, a wise void. I'll give him that. This is going to dash unless I play the bomber. Oops. Okay, it's not the end of the world. Alright, we're just gonna Lumberjack over to the side here and perfectly time it so that it gets no damage on our tower, except for the fact that it got damage on our tower. Okay. I'm gonna take care of all this jazz void here. And I think this should get raged up, which is nice, right? All of this gets raged up. I wanna have the easiest time defending this. Nice. Good, good at, like, recognition. A lot of times when people go for the kite, like, they're kind of, like, putting themselves in an elixir deficit. Because, like, we defended and then we got a good counter push off of that. So that was good recognition by us. Mm, I'm going to go for the cage here. Should pull in the bandit. And it'll pull in this guy, right? When he starts, when he walks up to it. Oh, I thought it was going to. Oops. It's okay. Good defense nonetheless. He still needs to defend against it. He'll probably have to go for, yeah, void. Okay. Rage Brawler, don't mess around though. Rage Brawler! Rage Brawler's crazy! Oh my god, it still almost got a hit. Okay, so I thought it was P.E.K.K.A., but I don't know for sure. Battle Ram just screams P.E.K.K.A., but we're not sure. A lot of times when you play this deck, like, you need to recognize, like, it's not always the best move to go for the Golem. Like, if they have really good answers for the Golem, you can win by just playing your secondary pressure cards a lot of the time. Which is weird, but that's just how it is sometimes. We have to spend a lot here. But he's going to spend a lot, too. That was like a bad Magic Archer, in my opinion. It felt kind of desperate to me. So we're going to spam him again. Not playing the Golem, right? We're avoiding playing the Golem. We don't need to. We're going to do this instead. Play our support cards. And still try and overwhelm them. Phoenix is going to respawn. And that's what I'm talking about. You can win without playing your Golem when you, when you run this deck. And that is important to recognize. If your Golem pushers are not working, if you're getting obliterated, like, that's fine. You can just win with your support cards. I do need to defend though, so I'm not gonna like act like the match has been already won, but it, it probably is. Yeah, so good game to this guy. We won. We won without even playing our P.E.K.K.A. Like that's dope. That's really good for us. Or sorry, without even playing our Golem. So that's nice. So good game to this guy. I'm curious if he had P.E.K.K.A. I think he did, and he didn't play it, because we never gave him a reason to. But weird unorthodox win. We'll take it and catch you in the next one. I looked at the battle log, and they did, in fact, have P.E.K.K.A. So good thing we didn't go for the Golem. To likely our last match of the video with this Golem deck. I've been having fun with it. It's Like I said, it's a completely different style of deck. Um, but I feel like I've, I've had a good amount of matches. So I'm just going to... Hopefully end on a dub here. That's kind of the goal of the video. I hope you've been enjoying the content so far. I'm telling you, if you don't usually play Golem, you got to give it a try. It's fun. It's different. You got to respect, you know, learning something new. So please give this deck a try and let me know if you enjoy it or not. Okay, this will take care of the Spear Goblins. Oh, I thought the Rage would take care of the Spear, spear Goblins. Oops. We're going to Phoenix here. Kind of keep my Barry alive, hopefully. I'll do this just right away. Might as well get some damage on the tower. Then you'll have to spend additional, like, a log or something, because otherwise this respawns. Wow, it freezes. Kind of a lot of elixir. I'm not going to lie. Oh, and it still respawned. If he spends more on this... Okay, I'm definitely going to drop the Night Witch. I'm going to ignore that, and I think I'm going to go in at the bridge. This is kind of what I'm talking about, where, like, if you get a slight elixir advantage, you can kind of just go crazy. Okay, let's do this. Oh. Oh. 
Okay. Never mind. We're fine. We're going to just do this anyway. My man is running the cheapest cycle deck I've ever seen. Okay, let's do this. I mean, not really, but it is pretty It is pretty cheap. Good defense by him. All right, we're going to let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. This should be good for us. As long, as long as we don't take too much damage at any given time, we're going to be okay. So kind of being selective with where we choose to take our damage. I'm going to cage like this, so if he pressures in the left lane, yeah, exactly. It'll kind of, like, pull the spirit. Beautiful. And same thing if we went, like, spear goblins or something. That was kind of the idea. Okay, we're going to drop one more berry in the back, because I feel like he's going to push this lane. No, he doesn't. Okay, he cycles his cage. So I'm going to go in for the golem. I think we can withstand a lot of the pressure that may be headed our way. So let's arrows here. Take care of the dark goblin. Nice. And we can ignore that brawler. So we're in a good situation heading into double elixir. We're going to night witch early to start spawning some bats. Okay. I'm debating if I want a void on that or how I want to play it. I will opt to go for the void. Then bury here on some of the spam because the spam does get a lot of value in this matchup. We're already back to another set of arrows, which is awesome. Evo Berry's getting a ton of value. And then now that all the spam is down, this is when you go for the Lumberjack. It's kind of like, okay, I'm going to overwhelm you. You're not going to be able to defend. Um, and yeah, there's no use defending that. Um, that's kind of Golem in a nutshell, right? It's just like, they can't defend that, right? That's kind of what you got to tell yourself when you run Golem. So, GG's to this guy. I mean, he, it looked like he was running an incredibly fast deck. So, I have lots of respect for him. I don't know what the freeze was or anything like that, but... I think we played it really well given the circumstances, so we're going to go ahead, golem in the pocket, just out of like pure symbolism, and we're going to hold that W, and I'll catch y'all in the outro. And that's going to do it for today's video. Here's the deck one more time in case you want to take a screenshot. I'll also put the deck link in the, the video description so you can just copy it yourself. Thank you for watching. I don't usually play golem decks, so I'm probably not a perfect golem player, but I wanted to expose you to this deck with the new Evo Goblin Cage and the Evo Bomber and all of the other cards. It's a really good deck. You will definitely learn a new skill, you know, playing this golem deck. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. And thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you in one of my other videos real soon. So peace.